March is Women's History Month. When I was in high school and college back in the 1970s, the American history world sort of woke up to the idea that women had been virtually ignored in the record of the past. Since then, we've been trying to put forward a more inclusive picture of our past, including the vital role that women have played forever, and also some other forgotten voices, such as African American people and Native American people. This year's Women's History Month theme is celebrating women of character, courage, and commitment. In the history department, we felt it would be appropriate to highlight a woman from Black River history named Haxiga Huniga, also known as Mountain Wolf Woman. You may have heard of her. She was certainly a woman of character, courage, and commitment. She was a member of the Thunder Clan and lived from 1884 to 1960. In her lifetime, Mountain Wolf Woman saw many things. As a young girl, she learned stories of the removal that her family faced in 1874 at the hands of the U.S. government. Many Ho-Chunk people, as you may know, ended up living in Nebraska after the final removal, while others stayed back or returned to Wisconsin. Though she moved a number of times in her life, Mountain Wolf Woman spent many years in the Black River area. She was the mother of 11 children and has left a great many descendants, many of whom still live in our region. Listen now as one of your classmates, Gracie Rave, reads a passage from Mountain Wolf Woman's autobiography. We lived there in the spring, April at the time. They were making maple sugar. She said that after a while, the weather became pleasant. Everything was nice and green. And we moved from this place back to where we usually lived, at Levi Creek, near Black River Falls. There, father built the log house. It was about the time that my older sister, Bald Eagle, was born that they went to Nebraska. Mother used to say they were taken to Nebraska that winter. They were moved from one land to another, but mother said some of the Wisconsin Winnebago did not like the removal. Some even cried because they were taken there. It seems that many Winnebago came back to Wisconsin. My family were evidently not the only ones who returned. Also, some of the Winnebago in Wisconsin lived way out in the country, a great distance from any town. These people said they had not been found so they did not go to Nebraska. We hope that you will think about Women's History Month during March. We're going to encourage students to interview an adult in their life, a teacher, another staff member, a parent, a guardian, about the role their mother played in their family. This will be part of our Falls History Project archive, and we hope you will be involved.